I need the recording turned up. Okay. Welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current active or former member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six speeches from either the traditional or pathway programs, or you must have substantial relevant presentation experience that you demonstrate in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role, if you have one. Right click on your image screen and select rename to do so. Please note that we have members and oftentimes guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we are recording this meeting and your video or audio may be used for club marketing purposes. Please mute your mic when you are not speaking. Toastmasters guests, please welcome our club president, distinguished Toastmaster, Lois Brown. Thank you, Madam Acting Sergeant at Arms. Welcome everyone to our, I guess I'll call this our holiday meeting we actually have a couple more before the end of the year so next week is also kind of a holiday meeting it'll be our new year's ish kind of meeting but this week is christmas kwanzaa hanukkah any seasonal holidays associated that you folks may celebrate we have uh, it's going to be an interesting meeting since we have a couple of folks that we're still kind of waiting to roll in for certain parts of that speech and i know we're going to have a very interesting tt segment as well I believe, Kimberly, you are our guest this week. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate that. And we are going to roll right into things. Please welcome our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Kim Leeming. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, Lou Brown, and welcome back guests. I'd like to welcome everyone to Online Presenters Toastmasters. I'm Kim Leeming, and it's my honor to be Toastmaster today for this evening. The word of the day is commodious. The definition of commodious is comfortably or conveniently spacious. The theme of the day is Christmas traditions from across the globe. Since the world is so commodious, the celebration of Christmas varies throughout the countries across the world. Here in the United States, Christmas is a time when everyone gets Santa mental. Ha ha ha. One of my favorite Christmas traditions in the United States is that of the ugly sweaters. This is one example. Cute or ugly, you decide. Here's another. Considering that we're an online Toastmasters group with members from many countries. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm seeing you come. We're not seeing you. Um, uh, we're just getting your your picture. Not even not you. In your ugly oh story. my gosh, you missed all the cuteness. Okay, so the original <laughs> one. I must. I must do this again. Sorry. Rewind. Rewind. So this was the original one. We're, oh, we're still, still not seeing you. Your, your video is still muted. Still still not seeing me. Turn up. You got your Click video. On the video in the lower left corner. Is that better? I'm so sorry, you guys. Mm, Is it working bottom left, now? Bottom left yeah. next to the microphone. Have you got stop nope. video clipped? There we go. Something happened. Yeah. There, there you we are. are. Yeah. 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 Okay, so this is not actually the whole thing, but I, I, I won't go over the whole thing again. But anyway, this is cute or not. And then another example is here. So cute. And I just want to share some of the different, and in this case, weirdest Christmas traditions from around the world. Let's start with Italy. In Italy, on January 5th every year, children enjoy a post-Christmas visit from Bafana, a good-hearted witch. 
She's a lot like Santa and she flies through the night on her broomstick, enters through the chimney and gives candy and presents to good boys and girls. I actually have a, oh, I don't know if I can get it for you guys. I actually have a, a presentation. You know what? We'll just do this. Um, to the good boys and girls and cool to the baddies. And then unlike St. Nick, um, Bafana wants wine and sausage instead of milk and cookies, which makes sense to me. That's what I would want, which is the least you could do considering she leaves presents and even sweeps up before she leaves. In Norway, Italians way milk may, well, may welcome their Christmas witch with open arms, but in Norway, witches are given no quarter. In a seasonal tradition that supposedly dates back to the pagan superstitions, Norwegians hide their brooms on Christmas Eve so no mischievous witches can steal them and fly off into the winter night to do witch business. There are some serious hotel holes in the story. How do the witches even get to your closet with your broom? I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm having a real glitch here. I am so sorry. This has never happened before. Um, anyway, you know what? I, I don't know what to do. I'm, uh, hold on. This has never happened to me. I am so seriously sorry. You're doing great. Don't worry yeah, about I it. We can all sing a Christmas you. carol. Yeah. Please do, because I'm, <laughs> I'm having a real issue here. I'm not the best singer here. Is anyone else a little bit more <laughs> vocally trained? <laughs> Hold on, you guys. I'm jingle so bells, sorry. jingle bells. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, so that's better than mine. <laughs> How are we going, Kim? Nearly there? Okay, so South Africa. Actually, let's go with Bermuda. Bermuda, they celebrate the Christmas rite. On Christmas morning, people light off firecrackers to wake everyone up. And then everyone straps on roller skates and boogies to the mass. After all the praying, families and friends get together to dance, eat, and make music. The skating tradition is said to have started in the Southern Hemisphere in response to sledding and has grown so popular the streets are closed to traffic in Venezuela's capital city of Caracas on Christmas morning to keep the skaters safe. South Africa, like the roller skating revelers of Venezuela, South African Christians adapted to the conundrum of Christmas in summer with creativity and style. For many in South Africa, Christmas is a lot like July 4th in the U.S., an excuse to go camping, have barbecues, and otherwise enjoy not being freezing cold. Well, the specifics vary from place to place. There's something called mummering. Mummering is a deeply weird ancient Christian tradition practiced in Canada, but Latvia, Newfoundland, and Ireland, whereas packs of men and women dress in elaborate costumes and knock on their neighbor's doors. Anyone foolish enough to allow the mummers to enter their house is re rewarded with songs, jokes, and dance. The hosts are expected to guess the identity of their guests and give them food and drink in return for their entertainment. Mummers say the tradition is not a prelude to a series of brutal murders, but I've seen enough horror movies to know what happens when max strangers show up at night. Let's go on to tonight's meeting. The first part is the prepared speeches. This is where people present a speech for a particular project within their Toastmasters pathway. The second part is table topics. This is the impromptu speaking part of the meeting where we get the chance to practice speaking off the cuff. And the final part is the evaluation part of the meeting each of the three speakers, actually tonight, two speakers, will receive an evaluation. This is a great opportunity for all of us to learn from the valuable and actual feedback each speaker receives. So back to Santa Claus. He has many elves to help him make the toys to deliver to children all over the world. Quick question. What do you call Santa Claus's little helpers? Subordinate clauses. Here at Online Presenters, we have assistants who help me make the reading run smoothly. For today, we'll refer that to them as Toastmasters Elves. I will now introduce these Toastmasters Elves. They will each have one minute to describe the role for tonight's meeting. The timer elf for tonight is Irvlyn Young. Irvlyn, will you please tell us your duties as timer? 
Hello, first session guests. As timer today, I will help you. I will time the prepared speeches, table topic speeches, and evaluations. And I will show. I will change my background into green, yellow, and red uh, to alert each speaker of the time they have left. For prepared speeches, I will change the my background at five, six, and seven minutes respect, respectively. You will see green, yellow, and red in this at this time point. And for evaluations, you will see you will see the color change at two minutes, two and a half, and three minutes. For table topic speeches, it's one minute, one and a half minutes, and two minutes. So take your time to spend your time wisely. Back to Toastmaster. Thank you, Erwin. Next up is our all counter elf. And today's odd counter elf is April LZ. April, could you please describe your duties tonight? Thank you, Toastmaster. I was able to change into my commodious Christmas sweater thanks to our virtual environment. My role as the odd counter is to listen for crutch words such as I, I'm, and so. And you know, among many others, these crutch words and filler words undermine our message and distract from our audience. I will listen for these crutch words and filler words among word repeats and false starts. When called upon, I will give my report. Thank you, Toastmaster. Thank you, April. Next up is our grammarian elf, Lou Brown. Lou, could you please talk about your role for tonight? I sure can, Madam Toastmaster. As grammarian, I will be looking for colorful uses of words phrases, sentences. I will also be looking for or hearing for incorrect usage of grammar. I will also be on the lookout, or that be the hear out, for uses of our word of the day, which is commodious, comfortably or conveniently spacious. I live in a commodious, I live in a yeah, commodious condo complex, a little bit of alliteration there as well, because it is filled with nature and walking paths and lots of greenery. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Lou. Tonight's watch elfer is Graham Carnes. Graham, could you please share your duties for tonight? Uh, yes, yes, Madam Toastmaster. The watcher role is something that is, whilst not exclusive to this club, is not something used in a lot of clubs. My role is to watch what is happening, to see that you are meeting the objectives, that you can always be seen, that your background doesn't subsume you. Because this club is all about online presentation, I mean, duh, the name is on the tin, it's important that we use this environment well. So I will be watching to make sure that we are using the environment the way that we should. Thank you, Graham. Tonight's chant monitor elf is Jim Barber. Jim, could you please describe your role for tonight? Actually, it's me. I, I, I stepped in for, mm. for Jim. So Jim could be an evaluator. All sorts of shuffling oh, going oopsie. on tonight. But no, that's okay. I should have posted it in the chat because the chat is the place where we communicate these things that are going beyond, beyond these scenes. And I will be watching the chat to see if anything important happens there or anything silly happens there. And I will relate interesting, silly, or alarming things to the appropriate parties at the appropriate points during the meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, David. Our vote counter L for tonight is in the tin motion. In the tin, could you please talk about your role for tonight? Yeah, thank you very much, Toastmaster, for the day. So my role today is to count the votes for the speakers, evaluators, table topic master speakers, and I will send a link in the chat box in where you can vote it. And at the end of the session, I will submit a report and uh, I will try to provide a commodious environment for the vote counting. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Inditin. So this brings us to the prepared speakers portion of the meeting. And tonight's first speaker, speaker is Lai Sing Zhu. And I just don't have everything in front of me. Um, 
I am so sorry. Lysing, take it away and please announce your tell of your speech as you start. So, Madam Toastmaster, can I do the honors as uh, the yes, assigned please. evaluator? Yes, please. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, Toastmaster Leasing is working on the power of engaging humor level one, mastering fundamentals. And her project speech for tonight is the first speech, evaluation and feedback. What she's going to be doing with this speech is to present uh, on any topic, to receive feedback and use that feedback for the second speech. And it's also for Leasing to present and receive feedback not only from me as evaluator but from everyone listening in on the speech so without further ado please put your hands together for a warm welcome for Lysing Zhu my journey as a professor my journey as a professor Lysing Zhu thank you Christine can you see me just to make sure my video is working good so when I join my university as a professor. I thought I don't need a Toastmaster. My English was good enough. The very fact that I was given this job in a teaching university that spoke the volume of my English proficiency. Therefore, why I need to waste my time with Toastmasters. I know I was got carried away and uh, I felt too much of self-satisfaction at times, but we know sometimes getting a job can be a huge success. And someone even get Nobel Prize for getting a job. Well, regardless, Getting the job done is the most important and most challenging. Whether the job is a professor or being a president. I must admit that I struggled at the beginning of the few semesters, at least for some times, which is not because of lack of efforts. Honestly speaking, my lectures were not Bad. Just like my prepared speech wasn't too bad. The problem is when students ask me questions, sometimes I don't understand what they are asking. Those students, they're just out of high school. They are young and they speak fast, they use jogging. They have little patience and they have no consideration to the fact that their professor, me, were not educated in this country, in this language. Why should they? I can blame them because they paid and they're customers. But I do blame that many mistakes in my spoken English of the vast difference between Chinese and the English language system. These two languages are just so incomplete compatible in many levels. Give you an example. Like the personal pronouns, he, she, her, it, him. Those five words in spoken Chinese, there's only one pronunciation, a single syllable sound called ta. That ta represents all five of them. Therefore, when I speak, in the classroom or during a conversation, we're under pressure. And my mind just not get around and work fast enough to pick up the right pronoun. As a result, sometimes when I talk about lady, I may say he. And sometimes when I talk about gentleman, I may say she. That's not funny, right? Because nowadays, mixing up with she and he can get us into serious trouble because as a society, we become more and more sensitive to issues related to sex, gender, and gender identity. And also those long vowels or short vowels, shit versus shit. I used to give my students worksheet 
and then ask them to complete it and turn back to me and for credit. I didn't remember how many times I just asked them, take this sheet, give me that sheet. Before I even know what's the meaning of that word, sheet. You know what? As a professor, I have learned we need to be very mindful with our choice of words. And we need to always be encouraging positive other than critical or negative. Our words have impact. But that's it's easy said than done, especially for someone like me with limited English vocabulary. I like to test my students. They are basic math abilities. I give them a question like, how much is 10% times 10%? How much is it? 10% times 10%? Some say 1%. I say, oh, good. Some say 100%. Hey, yeah, it's okay. I know why you made this mistake. But some student told me it's 25%. That caught me off guard. Without thinking, the words just flew out my mouth. What? How come you got 25%? You guys are so, so, so. What? I caught myself in time. And I, my mind was spinning as I ran in my head to looking for that positive and encouraging word. But I couldn't find it. I just keep saying, you guys are so, so, so creative. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much for such a wonderful speech. That was great. Our second speaker for tonight is Graham Carnes. His evaluator is Deborah Carr. Thank you so much, Graham, for stepping in at the last minute. And Graham's speech is titled, oh, I am so sorry, you guys. That's Graham, okay, Kim. Actual, title. Actually, I'm Graham's evaluator. So can you, Jim. oh, Jim, can you yes. please describe the objectives for Graham's speech tonight? I'll be happy to, Madam Toastmaster. Thank our second you for speaker. Me. <laughs> <laughs> our second speaker is Graham Cairns. His speech is titled "The Gift." It is a the. <clears throat> it is writing a speech with purpose. A new project, one of the new projects from Presentation Mastery at Level One. As far as his objective goes, for those of you that were around when we were setting all this up. Graham is doing this almost extemporaneously, so I would say his objective, knowing Graham, is to do slightly better with this presentation than he has done in any presentation in the past, because that's what he always does, and I'm looking forward to his achieving his objective. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster, and you can introduce Graham. Thank you so much, Jim. So take it away, Graham, with your speech titled, Writing a Speech with Purpose. Toastmasters and friends, let me take you back to the summer of 1965, turning into 1966. I was about to turn eight years old and I was the youngest of four children. Now, money was tight, but that was all right because mum and dad and Santa always seemed to come up with something to make me happy. That particular Christmas, it was a scooter with pump up tires and a bell and streamers coming back from the handlebars and it was so cool. But that wasn't the real gift that I was given that year. No, it was something that's lasted more than 50 years since then. For my birthday, a month later, mum and dad arranged for me to get my very own library card. Now, this is back in the days when the bookmobile, which was a giant caravan towed by a semi-trailer, would come around to our suburb every week. And a library card was the key 
to this magical kingdom and such a magical kingdom. I mean, I could go back in time or across the world or out into space. I could go anywhere and any when. With that card, I could borrow as many books as I wanted, no longer having to check with mum and dad about their suitability. And let me tell you, borrow I did. Two books, three books, four books of his. I positively devoured books. And to this day, I have rarely been without a library card. These days, I'm more likely to download books onto my Amazon Kindle or to read them on my phone, but I am constantly surrounded by books and magazines and other reading material. Biographies, philosophy, history, art, I read them all, but mostly, well, mostly I read fiction. It could be science fiction, could be historical fiction, it might be contemporary fiction. It might be stories of hard scrabble lives in a harsh desert landscape. It might be hard-boiled detectives in the slums of our cities. It might be starry-eyed youngsters starting their lives together or comfortable couples growing old gracefully. It might be historical novels bringing the past to life or fantasy realms of dungeons and dragons and demons. It could be young adult novels or hard science forecasts, but it is always, always examining what writers might call the human condition, how we deal with the world around us and with the issues that make us, us. My mum once said only half in jest that I would read the label off a jam jar if there was nothing else handy. And well, she was right. But the credit or the blame lies with her and dad for that gift of a library card. Because that gift so many years ago came with another gift as well. It came with the gift of imagination, the gift of wonder, the gift of loving the language, the lilt, the laughter of literature. If there was only one gift that I could have given my children, it would have been that. Fortunately, I have been able to give them more, but I'm glad to say that they have also accepted the gift of loving to read and to write. My son, while not as voracious a reader as me, does enjoy exploring the universe via books. We catch up for dinner every couple of weeks to share our lives and our plans and our news. And we share what we've read and what we've loved and, well, quite frankly, sometimes what we've left. For example, Alan sent me a message excited to share that he'd been featured in a book. It was the door of the wards and his counsellor, Dr. Alan Cairns, came out. Now, my son is not a doctor. But there is an author based here in our hometown of Brisbane who incorporates the names of fans into his latest works. Well, Alan was, as you can imagine, pretty chuffed. His sister, Lyndall, living in America, not only reads poetry for pleasure, but is a published poet in her own right. She's got a series on the demotion of Pluto called Planet Ish. And that book has been selected for a science poetry journal in the US. As her father, you can imagine I am pretty proud. So my children have accepted the gift of imagination, the gift of loving to read and to write. That's the gift that I was given all those years ago, the gift that I still enjoy today and the gift that I've been able to re-gift to my family. So here's a question. Do you have a library card? Give yourself the gift of a library card. If you don't have one, Go and find one, ladies and gentlemen. Find a library. There are libraries that will allow you to download without physically having to go into the library. There are libraries where you can borrow books at your local train station on your way to work if you commute by rail. There are libraries that are in suburbs where people put books in a little bird box outside their house and invite you to take a book and give a book. But whatever you take the opportunity, give yourself the gift of a library card, give yourself the gift of literature, give yourself the gift of reading. It's a gift that will last you for a lifetime. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Graham. Another their excellent speech for tonight. Again, our timer out for tonight is Irvlin Young. Irvlin, could you please give a timer's report for the two speeches? Yep, 
uh, both speakers operate within, finish their speech within the commodious frame of time. Li Chung Chu spent six minutes, 20 seconds, and Graham, five minutes, 38 seconds. Back to Toastmaster. Thank you, Erwin, and thank you for using the word of the day. Um, if, and if you could post those times in chat, that would be wonderful. Now, could everyone please take a moment to cast your vote for the best speaker of the day? And thanks much for that. And uh, next, we're moving on. I've never been this bad, you guys. I just want to cry, actually. Um, table now we're on to table topics impromptu. Thank you. Um, tonight's table topics master is Graham Carnes. Please welcome Graham. It's all right. I am table topics master because That's of all the right. shake up. So, you know, we just throw it in the air and one of us is going to land on something tonight. That's one thing for sure. Fellow Toastmasters, I have been blessed. I don't know if I was blessed or what I did, but 25 years ago, I started writing children's letters to Santa. They're from Santa, Santa letters to children. Anyway, I have a whole variety of them from age, from newborn on up to age 12. So what we're gonna do tonight is just take a step back in time for if you experience Santa or St. Nick or whatever it is that you may have experienced as a child. One thing that I, that I did when as a kid, we had Santa brought down the chimney when I was about four years old some way or another, and I never did figure it, well, I figured it out naturally when I got older, but I got a fishbowl with five goldfish or six goldfish. And it was just magical how he some way got that down that chimney for us and didn't spill the water. Anyway, so Indeman, I am going to ask you if, if you had um, one of your experiences, one of the experiences that I write about in the children's letter is Elmo. And Elmo does the craziest things from painting the, the sleigh the wrong color, like bright yellow, to one time he fell in a can of paint. Did you ever have an experience of in, in the childhood of something magical like that that you're trying to figure out and, play, and go along with it in your stories of the, of the elves? You know, I didn't think about him being vote counter. No, oh, well. Okay, he may not have heard me. All right. Um, yeah, it doesn't appear that he did. Kimberly, tell me about the elves. Anything that you may have experienced with the elves growing up in your childhood with the magic of Christmas? I don't know about the elves, but they had to be true because I always wonder how we went to sleep at night and woke up in the morning and we had all of the gifts and all of the toys waiting for us. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Santa had to make a trip all the way around the world. He had to deliver toys to children all over. I know that he needed help to do this. Not only did he have to travel all over, he had to sit and have milk and cookies with all of the parents before he left. I know he had elves helping him. Mrs. Claus had nothing to do with that. She stayed at home. She kept things going on the forefront. The elves, they had to been working their butt off. Plus who was gonna take care of the reindeers? Who fed the reindeers? I know after a trip all the way around the world, they had to get hungry at some point. They had to have water at some point. I think the elves were just as busy or more busier than Santa. Thank you. Jeanette, another story that I write about is the, the reindeer are out frolicking about in the, in the yard and they're, they're playing their little mindful games, except Rudolph that year has a brighter than bright nose. It's so bright, even though, I mean, it just glows more than anything. So one of the 
one of the sentences says, I really wonder what, what Rudolph was drinking. Possibly you have some stories and then, yeah. So maybe you have some, some thoughts about childhood and the reindeer. Yes, uh, I remember from when I was around three years old. And um, the idea is that I, was, uh, I always slept for my birthday. And my birthday falls on July the 25th, but let's say it was uh, December the 25th instead. And I used to always sleep when it was my birthday, almost like some people thought that maybe um, my mother gave me some kind of alcohol of some sort so that I could sleep. But I was, I, I never slept. But I remember one day in my stupor of um, sleep, I saw a big doll and that big doll was so big and it was bigger than me because I was around three years old and I couldn't even catch the, I, I couldn't even hold the doll because it was so big. And what I remember is that as I grew up, uh, maybe I was around like maybe um, three, three and three and two months later, Three, three years old and two months later, I started uh, dismembering the doll. Like I removed the arms, I removed the legs. So I think maybe Rudolph had something to do with it. You know, maybe it's because his nose was so red that it made me do some very bad things. What did Rudolph drink that day or that day of my birthday? Maybe Rudolph had some alcohol. And maybe the rum, maybe it was some mulled wine that made Rudolph make me do so many bad things. So that's my take on it. I think Rudolph drank a lot of mulled wine. Back to you, Mrs. Tobil to Table Topics Master. Thank you. Another thing that I do when I take information and in from the parents, I, there's a little form that I fill out or that is to fill out in it. And it says, please tell Santa one, one to two things that they're doing very well in and something that they need to improve in. So it's always interesting because last year there was a two-year-old that was beating up on her four-year-old brother. There's just stories galore and they're so fun, absolutely fun. So Donna, tell me, if you had your, you know, the things that you're probably doing your best at age four, maybe you're learning to, I don't know, whatever, button your, your coat or remember to put your coat on, but what would you have needed to improve on, do you think? What would I need to improve on as I was growing up or as an adult now? Oh, no, age four. We're back at oh, age four. Age four. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I roughly, can clearly... Roughly remember as a child during the Christmas season, because we have a thing called Jankunu. And Jankunu is where we have all these characters. We have Belly Woman, we have the horse, we have Pitchy Patchy, and they go on and they have this noise and they're going on and they have the devil. And I really hated them. <laughs> but at that stage of my life, I really couldn't tie my shoes properly. And I'll never forget the time when they turned the corner and we could hear them and I was at the gate. But my shoes were not properly tied and I'm trying to do it. But nobody's paying me any attention because the Jankunos were an excitement at that time. And at that time, I really wanted to. But the good thing is, my brother noticed and he was a little younger and he grabbed me and helped me and we raced back inside the house to safety. So at that time, I really needed to learn to tie my shoes and I'm going to tell you the truth. I spent so much time learning how to tie it after that. So by the time I remember my mother saying, it's your birthday at age six, I actually was tying my shoes days. Back to you, Toastmaster, Tabletop is Master. Another, one of the other stories I had was, it just starts out as, oh, wow, leaping lizards. I cannot believe what's gone on this year. And I said, and then the story goes on as, as you know, there really aren't any lizards in the North Pole. However, 
it's been just such a crazy year. We are working away with the, you know, with the elves in the, in the workshop. And then all of a sudden the gingerbread man went running by because he was, he was working out for the winter. Just the craziness that happens. David Carr, tell me about one of your craziest Christmases you've ever had. Craziest Christmases I have ever had. <sighs> Here, I, I, I actually, it's one of those things where I don't know how to answer the question, uh, but I, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you that when I was young, Christmas meant going over to my great grandfather's house, big old house in uh, Middletown, Rhode Island. Is, Middletown is mostly famous for being next to Newport, but uh, Middletown, uh, he was the patriarch of the family. He had founded what they called the Crusher. It was a, a gravel gravel mine, basically, uh, that, uh, and they would do road work around town. So big family gatherings, in this house and my great grandfather, he was known by the nickname, hi there, because that's what he would say to you. Hi there, young fella. And that's what I remember is big Christmases that with a you know, big turkey, big, big, um, big crowd, lots of family around. And I am so far from that these days. <laughs> <laughs> I will be having Christmas with my immediate family, and, and that's it. And everything else is going to be over the phone or, or maybe even Zoom, uh, something like that. But uh, things have gotten downsized over the years, and that was a crazy Christmas time, but it was a good Christmas time. It was a good thing to be a little kid running around in this big crowd of family. Uh, so that's something to remember. Table Thank you. Master. Thank you. And all of the letters, they either have a picture of Santa on them or the, the whatever. They're always happy and bright. They go in a red, red envelope always so the kid knows it as soon as it comes. And some of the kids I have started, you know, started at age two on up. Uh, yet other ones were just hit or miss for a couple of years. What was fun is one year I got a letter from a copy of a letter that a teenager left and she wrote, she left for Santa Claus. It says, dear Santa Claus, please sign your name at the bottom of this page because I really believe in you and I know most teenagers do not. But I do and I'm going to prove to them that you're real. So please sign at the bottom, thank you. It's hysterical because the mother sent it to me later. So Lou Brown, when you were right on that edge of believing or not, what made you just hold on for another year? Wow, this is a great question. The What immediately came to my mind, Madam Topics Master, when you mentioned the fact that a teenager had written a letter about his or her belief in Santa and that they still held on like that, brought me to the... Miracle on 34th Street movie. And what I really liked about that is the fact that it isn't so much that Santa himself exists in the way that a lot of people think he is, this magical person who lives in the North Pole and delivers presents to 7 billion people all in one night, yada, 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 all that stuff. It's the fact that the spirit of Christmas, the necessity especially these days that we all be kinder and gentler to each other compassionate understanding giving and generous does exist and is it's all about what's from within us in other words not outside of us and that is timeless that doesn't matter whether you're two whether you're 20 whether you're 80 whatever that is something that is with us for all of our lives and it may start out in somewhat of a magical way with this magical figure when we're early, when we're young. And I think that's because that's the best way to explain it to a child is what the spirit of Christmas is all about. And of course, a lot of kids kind of just say, I want toys and that's it. I was one of those kids. But 
it's still, as time went on, I learned more and more about the fact that when you give presents, that really brings up a much greater feeling of satisfaction and happiness than simply receiving. And again, that is just something that is timeless uh, in, in terms of um, advice, I, I guess I'll say. And what really, again, is what makes Christmas Christmas and not so much this magical person that lives somewhere in the North Pole. Uh, so I'm really glad that that uh, letter is real and that it came from somebody who does believe because even to this day, I believe in the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of Santa and what it's all about this season. Back to you, Madam Topics Master. Thank you. One more or should we drop it right now? One more is good, I think. Okay. Henry Byrne. Okay, then now he's looking up. Okay. Andy, when my son was about six, or my, he could have been seven, he went to his sister and he said, Trina, please tell me. He said, is there a Santa or not? And he was pretty young. Anyway, there were different things he had asked me. He said, you know, he said, Mom, I just, I, I want to know. He said, so can you get me a picture of the reindeer? in the field and it just happened General Motors one of the plants had a <laughs> had a field in a woods with with deer so I went out and we took pictures then he wanted another picture of you know the, of Santa doing something because you know one of my clients he was even checking he was even checking handwriting on the cards so one of my clients at the barbershop was writing my cards out for me one year so Andrew when you were questioning and as it ended up, Trina said, well, what do you believe? And he said, I really don't. But he said, I don't want to disappoint mom and dad. So tell me when you tell me when you started questioning. How did you feel? What questions did you need verification? Or was it all tied together with just your beliefs as you were raised? Thank you for the question. Table Topics Master. I represent a group of people that's less than 1% in the United States. And that's a group that is non-Christian. Uh, we are Jewish and we do not celebrate Christmas, but we respect everybody's beliefs and enjoy their holiday and how they celebrate it and see the origins of it and look behind. When you talked about how you thought about the holiday, we certainly learned from early uh, youth uh, about our tradition and what the meaning of things were. And as Adam Sandler sang in his uh, song, uh, it was very frustrating for him growing up because everybody is singing Christmas carols. And for the most part, there are not very many Hanukkah songs. And not that there should be equivalents between Hanukkah and Christmas, but the festivities, the lighting, the commercialization, all that stuff that came around Christmas time was not there in the Jewish tradition. And he came up with the Hanukkah song because he wanted to have something that he could sing while everybody else was putting on lights and everything else. And it's really uh, quite ironic because during Christmas time, everybody's lighting trees. And yet Hanukkah is the festival of lights, celebrating the miracle of the single can of oil lasting eight days where it should have only lasted one day. So if anybody should be having lights all over the place, we should be having that in our tradition, but we don't. But that's the difference between Christmas and Hanukkah. Thank you very much, Table Topics Master. Yeah. I'm looking forward to February 1st. Chinese New Year this year yes, is the yes. year of the tiger, which is my year. Okay. I have some, I have Jewish friends that celebrate both. And, and, and I know different families, everybody celebrates different. So it's, um, it's wonderful. And it was fun tonight to hear all this, you know, from all of you tonight. So it was great being Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Deborah. 
And, and, and Andy, thank you for sharing the Jewish traditions. This is going to sound weird, but I've been watching a lot of Hallmark movies and they've been really focusing on the Jewish traditions. And I just love it that you guys have such neat, wonderful ways of celebrating the holiday. So, um, so thanks again, Deborah, for a very festive and fun table topics. And um, Irvin, if you could please go ahead and give us the uh, timers report for table topics, that would be great. Everybody handle the time well. I have posted every speaker's time on the chat column. Uh, I noticed that most speakers spend about two minutes and a couple of them spent a little over one minute for, so I encourage those two speakers who, who spent a little over one minute to speak 30 more seconds because you have great stories and what we would like to hear more back to Toastmaster. Thank you, Irvin. So um, please vote for best table topics. And our next portion of the meeting is the evaluations. This is the educational part of the meeting. Our general evaluator for tonight is Andy Byrne. He will lead the evaluation portion of the meeting. Please welcome Andy Byrne. Well, thank you very much. And we are now in what is decided by most Toastmasters around the globe. The general evaluator has the most important role introducing evaluators to give feedback and input into everyone's speech to allow them to grow and see them evolve in Toastmasters. Our first speech that we had was delivered by Lesane Zhao, and we look forward to having her evaluation by none other than Christian is doing her evaluation. So I look forward to Christian giving us an evaluation on our first speaker, Li Zin Zhao. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you pronounce sheet in your part of the world in English? <laughs> That's, that is one of the memorable segments of the speech. Thank you, Li Sing, And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the name right. Li Sing. So thank you for doing and delivering your first speech and congratulations because you met the objective of this speech project to deliver a speech on your theme of choice, your message of choice and improve on it. Now, what I enjoyed was listening to you. I didn't feel bored. I didn't feel distracted. It wasn't hard for me to capture the words as you were speaking. So even though English is not your first language, I still enjoyed your delivery, so congratulations. And as you were going along, the words were well pronounced. The pacing could have been improved with variety, but it was good enough for this first speech. The visual presence, I saw you looking at me, you, you were trying to put in gestures, so that was good enough for me to be engaged. And as you were going along, you tried to deliver a structured message. And here's my first recommendation for Lacing. I heard six different elements, six different parts to the speech from starting with the introduction then moving to the comparison between being a Toastmaster and university lecturer, getting the job done. The fourth one was how young people behave, then English versus Chinese word comparison, English word pronunciation, the 10% times 10%. <sighs> it's a bit too much for me for a seven minute speech. My recommendation would be less is more here. So three to four elements. It depends on what, how much you want to share. But what I'm going to invite you to do also is to have a clear call to action because I was looking at the timer. The timer was on yellow and you ended. I was expecting you to tell me, okay, what was the point of this message? What do you want me to do after listening to you? So clear call to action with a conclusion that would have been fantastic to this engaging message you had. My second recommendation would be with transitions. I heard the different elements, but I would have so much love that you would have engaged me because part of your challenge with humor is to get me into your speech, get me engaged. So the transitions could have done that for me especially if you had asked me a rhetorical question. So do you think 
that English is difficult in my part of the world, of the world. And then you could have moved on to the next segment of your speech. So consider using rhetorical questions as transitions for the next time you deliver the same speech. And the third recommendation I have is with the humor element. Just as I'm going completely out of time here, I heard you with moments of humor. They were fantastic. The ta versus he, she, the sheet moment. Consider having triads. For example, you, I heard you describe the young people. I was expecting young, dumb, and full of inconsideration. Uh, not the word that everyone is expecting. You could have also used pauses and really have the facial expressions that like emote what you're trying to deliver as message. But the best part of everything I heard from you listening were the personal anecdotes, the storytelling. That was fantastic. So I'm sending you evaluation. We can connect afterwards. I thoroughly enjoyed the message. Looking forward to the next speech. Back to you, Mr. Joel Evaluator. Not completely Thank out of time. Thank you very much. And this club is always enriched by the diversity of the members and the depth of their knowledge. We had Graham Carnes coming up and stepping into a vacancy and he was delivering a speech, The Gift. Excellent speech that I want to hear more from Jim Barber who will help us all grow by dissecting what he heard, observed and felt. Go ahead, Jim. It's my pleasure, Mr. General Evaluator. My fellow Toastmasters, our soon-to-be member, Kimberly, and especially, of course, Graham Carnes. The speech, excuse me, the gift. The gift was the title of your presentation, and Graham, this was a gift to us. Thank you very much. That was wonderful of you. You were to prepare a speech with purpose, to write a speech with purpose. And anybody that didn't get the purpose of your speech, to get a library card and, of course, especially to read, they just were not paying attention. They were not in the same world because you accomplished that purpose wonderfully. Now, I want to describe all the things that you did right but I don't have time. Evelyn wouldn't allow me to get away with that. So I'll simply say very briefly, of course, your vocabulary, your pacing, your vocal variety, especially your use of the word of the emphasis, putting emphasis on the proper syllables. That's just so well done. You are the master of the pause, of the effective pause. That is superb. I study what you do. You said that as a child, you would read the label of a jam jar. Well, as an adult, if you were to read the label of a jam jar, I am confident that you would make it sound like Shakespeare. You are just a treasure to listen to. I have a couple of very tiny suggestions. Both of them apply visually, because vocally, I cannot do a thing there. But visually, and as I say, these are minor things, but your background, you have a background of a Christmas tree with a, ornaments behind it. And it looks nice, but it's a little distracting to me to have the Christmas tree right in the middle. I would like to see it a little bit off-centered, the way that uh, Donna has her of uh, uh, background off center and Kim also has her background when she was on screen, had her background off a little bit off center. I think that would be a little more attractive. And also if you could change the level of your camera so that the angle of your camera so that the top of your head is a little bit closer to the top of the screen, kind of like Ervalyn is doing or Kim is doing, uh, that there you go, something like that makes a little bit better use of the visual frame. But these are, as I say, tiny minor suggestions. This was a masterful presentation made more so by the fact that it was something that you came up with on very short notice. This was a gift and I appreciate it. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you so very much, Jim. We had other people providing feedback 
for all of us in different roles. Let me go through some of their observations and what they can share with the group. First, our awe counter, April. What can you share? Thank you, General Evaluator. During our today's meeting, our top three fill our crutch words were I'm um, so and and. I didn't feel like these words actually took away from anyone's speech or during the table topics. You can tell that we are actually are an advanced club, but these were the top three crutch words that were used. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna post a detailed report in the chat so that everyone can see their detailed filler words that were used. Back to you. Thank you very much. Our next observer and listener, active listener, was Lou Brown, the grammarian. Thank you, Mr. GE. In terms of some creative use of language, with Lee Sang, you use the phrase, our words have impact, which I completely believe in. You guys are so creative. And of course, my favorite, turning your shit cheat. Sorry, I knew it was. I love that joke. That was great. Graham had anywhere and any when. I love that. Any when. I'm going to use that. Hopefully you don't mind if I steal that. Very descriptive and creative use of, of visuals during your speech with the starry-eyed youngsters, uh, creepy something criminal. I, there were so many of them, I couldn't keep up with my notes, so I know I missed some of them, but there was a whole slew of them. Really great. Gift of imagination and the lilt of literature. Jeanette used the word stupor. That's not a word that you hear every day. I love that word. That's great. And Donna Junkin News, I heard that word once before. I know I probably should know what it means, and I have to look it up again because I just forgot. And I apologize because, yes, I should be actively listening, Mr. GE, but when we got to table topics, I was just so interested in all the stories people were sharing that I kind of stopped taking notes. I apologize for that. Word of the day, commodious. I heard it from April. Imtonin, Irvlin, Kim. If I miss anyone, please raise your hand now because I apologize. Wonderful, back to you, Mr. GE. Thank you very much for your report. We also had David Carr watching, looking at everything that we were doing. David, tell us about your report. Actually, I was the chat mod. Yeah, uh, well, somebody else did what Graham was the watcher. I, I was right? the watcher, I can do watcher if you like. I'll do watcher first. Well, you did the watcher followed by the chat, so. Watching, then hearing. Thank you. Um, uh, one of the things that I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting was that I would be watching for the use of the space. And I want to commend everybody on the, the effective use of space. I also want to commend everybody on the use of their backgrounds. There were some really well chosen backgrounds today. For example, Kim's tree and decorations were great. I thought the, uh, the, 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 the lights behind uh, Imtanan were very effective. I will say that I agree that my, my tree was overpowering or at least distracting and we should be aware of that sort of thing. I really like the use of the blurred background, which is something that David is using quite effectively here today, as is April. One thing I would say that at one stage, 25%, well, actually four out of 15, so that's slightly over 25%, but at one stage, 25% of all the cameras were either turned off or turned onto the avatar that we have. So please, unless you have a reason to turn your camera off during the meeting, keep it on because it lets the speaker know that you are still engaged. But in general terms, as a group which is dedicated to improving our online presentation, I think we all done good, eh? I can say that now that the grammarian's finished. <laughs> all right. And uh, chat monitor. Uh, chat monitor wishes to note that Jim Barber did sneak in the word commodious into the chat. I, I think that's cheating, Jim, but you know, I, I, I can't fault you for trying. The, the chat was used, um, I think, appropriately and you know, largely functionally along the way. We did have Graham uh, educating us on milk and cookie equivalents around the world. In Australia, apparently it is beer for Santa and carrots for the reindeer, which others uh, suggested explain the red nose and the big belly, at least partly. We also learned that Deborah took 
conversational Chinese some time ago, which means I think we've got to get Deborah in front of one of the Toastmasters clubs that conducts its meetings in Chinese, and she can give her speech that way to, uh, to show that she's up to Lei Sing's uh, level, speaking in another language. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I'm daring her for that, uh, not speaking much of a word of any other language myself. <laughs> um, and that is the end of the chat monitor's report, but I uh, just thought I'd give the I counter something else to work with. Back to the general All evaluator. Right. Uh, Imitin, have you finished counting your votes? Yes, thank you, General Victor. I have finished my counting my votes. And the winners are. Uh, you've just muted yourself, uh, Imtanan. Unmute. Uh, so the speaker is uh, Lai Sing Tzu, and she uh, delivered a very good speech. And uh, even if, even she had a first speech. And table topic speaker is Andrew Byrne. And uh, for evaluation, I think Christian Ramchuran has uh, done a very good job. And uh, as usual, so, uh, so yeah, all the people have done a very good job. So, Mr. Vote counter. If I may, uh, I'm not eligible to be uh, counted in because I'm disqualified because of time. So I declare Jim Bob as the winner of the evaluation segment. Back to you. Okay, so Jim Bob is the, is the best evaluator. So thank you very much, Krishna. <clears throat> over, to you, over to you in the evaluation. Thank you very much. And we feel for you, Christian. We've seen so many contests where people are off for as little as one or two seconds and they've lost the contest and they were unquestionably the best one doing that particular contest and they lost by not keeping track of time. So that's one of the things that we won't have to worry about in 2023 because then AR and VR will be around and available so we can have our glasses projecting the timer, and we would know right away uh, what's going on. Any event, uh, here's my evaluation for the meeting so far. It is now uh, 8.57 uh, Eastern Standard Time, and we are rapidly coming to the end of the meeting. We have done a wonderful job in keeping track, and thank you very much, Kim, for helping organize and run our meeting. Thank all the speakers and thank everybody that participated coming and showing up. We are running down to the end of the year. We have one more meeting in the calendar year coming up and we thank everyone for doing their stuff. For those that have not opened their emails today, I did send out a Google form survey to remind everybody that there's some things to be thinking about as we go into the new year. The survey basically touched on the issues of uh, leadership goals and your educational goals and what you want to be part of in this coming year. Very fast survey. It looks long because I broke out each of the leadership roles. So you have the seven roles, then you have the yes, no, maybe kind of thing. So I wanted to let everyone know that it's there. If you need additional, uh, send it to you, but I used your emails for Toastmaster and send it directly. So everybody should have received that today without any problem. I wish everybody personally a wonderful holiday. We're gonna get back to the meeting. I'm gonna go back to our Toastmaster of the day. At the end, we're gonna go and fill out the unfilled roles for the 27th of December. Take it away, Kim. Thank you so much, Andy. And thanks to everyone tonight for filling my night with wonderful speeches, fun table topics, and educational evaluations. So I have a couple of uh, questions to end the night with. So what do rangers say before they tell you a joke? Well, this one's gonna slay you. What's the difference between the Christmas alphabet and the ordinary alphabet? Well, the Christmas alphabet has no L's. These are really bad. These are like dad jokes. So why is it getting harder to buy advent calendars? 
because their names are numbered. And what do you call an elf that can sing and dance? Elvis. And what do you call a kid who doesn't believe in Santa? It's a rebel without a clause. With that, I will now hand the meeting back to our president, Lou Brown. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Wonderful job running today's meeting. I really appreciate your creativity, your enthusiasm, Kim. I know you felt like you were a little uh, unsure of what to do here and there, but you know what, quite frankly, that doesn't matter. This is a laboratory for all of us, whether we're Toastmaster or holding a role or speaker or evaluate, whatever. Believe me, I was a little jumbled myself with some of the things I was supposed to do, but again, we're all here to learn. We're all here to just have a good time. We're all here to support each other. And that's one thing I also really like what happened tonight was, you know what, when Kim was kind of a little uh, fumbling here and there, folks just were ready to jump in and help her. So thank you to everyone for that. And, and thank you also, for that. I want to say, because I got to tell this is, I'm very embarrassed and all that, but thank you so much yeah. for all those that stepped in. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. And no need to feel embarrassed at all. Again, to, with me, I know sometimes that happens with me. I'm like, but wait a minute. If there's a place that I don't need to be embarrassed, it's here with this team where I am practicing, you know, these things. Then when I execute in the real world, it might be a little different, even though I think part of what we practice is to say, you know what? Sheet happens. Nothing we can do about <laughs> it. So you just kind of roll with the punches. Anyway, yes, thanks everyone for being here. I know th as we, with today's meeting, it being the holiday week for Christmas, Next week being New Year's, that'll be right around the corner. We'll probably have relatively small attendance. But quite frankly, this is really a, a good turnout because my other clubs are barely a handful of people. And I'm glad that we were able to fill all the roles as easy, quickly as we could with tonight. Kimberly, we, I know this is, I'm going to say, second, maybe third visit from you. I'm How do you feel about four? Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to have to send you that membership application, my friend. I think we're... Probably at that stage, right? Hi, what did you gain from tonight's meeting? I learned a little bit more about um, the use of space. And I also learned about how when there's not enough people to fill the roles, everybody just kind of jumps in and come together and they kind of like make it work. Tonight, the meeting seemed perfect, even though at first it seemed like we were short but everything just worked out perfect and right on time so awesome and i couldn't agree more as i mentioned with some of my other clubs when things uh tend to go a little off astray i guess i'll say it is really much more difficult uh when you're dealing with say novice toastmasters to get things a little bit more on track than it is with our team because we're all advanced toastmasters we know how things go and also very good about helping each other out so yes great observation appreciate that and again, as I mentioned, we have a relatively light crew here today. I expect it may be a little light next week as well, but thank you all very much for being here. We hope you will be with us next week as well. For those who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. For those who celebrate all the other holidays, I have to admit I'm terrible about keeping track about the timing when everything occurs, but happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa. I think there may be a few others. Happy Ramadan, maybe a few others that I missed. So happy holidays all around. Andy, I will turn it over to you. I know you are eager to get some of those roles filled. Given, I don't know how many are open. Given how many folks we have here now, I don't think we'll fill.